Well, welcome to day three of the five day social media fitness challenge. It is a rest day, but I wanted to take the time to explain a very important topic, staying proactive in a socially reactive world. Well, why is that important? Well, in 2013, it was a great year of hard lessons learned by businesses and how they conducted themselves and reacted on social channels during times of crisis like the Boston bombing or uh, perhaps the tornadoes in Oklahoma. What can we learn from mistakes made by businesses so we can create a plan of action? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in day three of the five day social media fitness challenge. So let's get started. First, let me ask you a question. How did you hear about 9-11? During 9-11, I was teaching English in South Korea, so it was already the end of the day for me because of the time change. I remember coming home from Taekwondo practice late that night and my husband alerting me of planes that crashed into the World Trade Center in the Pentagon. Then we watched the news together and witnessed the horror of the towers falling. It was heart-wrenching. Chances are you had a similar experience, hearing about 9-11 from a person. Whether it was a friend, a coworker, or someone you knew, chances are you heard about 9-11 from a real person. Now let me ask you another question. How did you hear about the Boston bombing? I remember seeing a tweet about it on my smartphone. Soon enough, every social channel was inundated with news of what was going on in Boston. And it's quite possible that's how you learned about the Boston bombing too, from your mobile phone or social media channel shortly after the bombing took place. Either way, it was likely that your news came from technology and not a real person. And that's the world we're living in now, real time. Our technology has evolved in such a way that people share and communicate such tragedies like the Boston bombing in real time. Businesses, however, should seek caution on social channels when reacting to a national crisis, as we learn from numerous mistakes made by businesses following the Boston bombing. Your real time response may create an embarrassing or PR disaster. So as a business, how do you proactively deal with a socially reactive world when such tragedies take place? Well, that's what we're going to cover in day three. So here are some important tips to stay socially proactive. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, the most important thing businesses need to realize is that we operate in real time, which means mistakes, however innocent or unintentional, are seen by the world in real time, and using poor judgment on social channels can create a viral wave of bad publicity you don't want to get into. There are some great benefits to being able to discover, track, and share information that matters to us and with people that matter to us. But in cases like the Boston bombing, there are some very important lessons, mostly learned from social media mistakes made by businesses in response to the Boston bombing, that businesses should be aware of to prevent their brand from risking bad PR. So with that in mind, what are some tips for your business? The biggest recommendation is that once you are aware of an unfortunate event, like the Boston bombing, it's recommended to seize all automated posting on social media channels. This is something that's really easy to do if you're using something like Hootsuite or a related service. And if you are a business, it's best to only post supportive posts. I have bulleted that unless you're a media agency, you shouldn't be posting like a reporter, and this is more my personal opinion. One of the lessons we learned from Boston was that some of the information being shared rapidly on social channels may have been misleading or not completely true. And quite honestly, that's the last thing you want to do is blast to your social channels information that later turns out to be false or not entirely correct, which is why I feel that unless you're a media agency, businesses should be a supporter on social channels and not a reporter. The final tip I have for you is to avoid self-promotion. And while this may be obvious to many businesses, turned out to be a valuable lesson learned the hard way by some, let's take a look at one example. This is a screenshot of a tweet posted on the day of the Boston bombing. In honor of Boston and New England, may we suggest whole grain cranberry scones. It's likely that it wasn't this business's intent to sound so insensitive and self-promoting, but you can understand why the public would be outraged to see such a post during such a dark time. One post that I did see often was this post. 
a quote made by Mr. Rogers about looking for the helpers who show they care when disaster strikes. It's a very comforting quote which helps show your support and respect during times of tragedy. Now, I saw this quote come up many times in different forms, in different ways, with different pictures of Mr. Rogers on various social media channels, and it's quotes like this that I strongly recommend all businesses have in their arsenal to use in such cases. Now, let's say your business is directly affected by a tragedy or a natural disaster. For this example, we can learn a great deal from iThemes. Now, iThemes is a very popular website host to a suite of plugins and webinars that are used frequently by web developers and just so happens to be based in Oklahoma. Following the Oklahoma tornadoes where towns, homes, and lives were destroyed, iThemes posted this on the header of their website and every page of their website. We're fine in Oklahoma. Here's how you can help our neighbors. This is an amazing example to me because iThemes is based in Oklahoma and were directly affected from the tornadoes. They even wrote on their website that a few staff members did lose quite a bit of their possessions from the tornado's destruction, but were grateful their families were safe. And being located in the center of destruction gave them an opportunity to help their community, which is why I think this is a great lesson all businesses can learn from, especially when disaster strikes so close to home. Another mistake that got quite a bit of spotlight in 2013 were mistakes or bad choices made by employees of businesses. The picture at the top is a woman dressed as a Boston bomber victim for Halloween. This picture caused such an uproar on social channels that one of the many consequences this woman faced, aside from being cyberbullied, was being fired from her job. Her bad choice even created negative publicity for her employer, which is why she ended up being terminated. Another example is a man who accidentally posted something very personal to his business's Twitter account. Now this accident was unintentional, but still created negative publicity for his business. Another example of a business getting bad PR is from disgruntled employees. In this case, a man posted negative tweets after being fired from his employer on the business's Twitter account. The negative tweets angered customers and became bad PR for the business. So how can we take these mistakes and turn them into proactive tips for your business? One recommendation is to seek a second opinion before posting anything. What may be okay to you could be potentially offensive to someone else, which is why it's always good to seek a second opinion before posting. A second tip, obvious but still important, is to double check which account you're posting to before you actually post something, especially if it's something really personal. One way to help make sure you're only posting business posts on business accounts and personal posts on personal accounts is learning a lesson from Disney. Now, I went to university in LA and was friends with many people that worked at Disneyland. And one of the many strict rules I learned about being a Disneyland employee was that it was strict company policy that you could not wear your Disney costume outside of Disneyland. If you were caught doing so, you were immediately fired. This had to do with keeping a very positive and clean image Disney's brand represents to the public. If a Disneyland employee was caught doing something wrong, like getting in a fight at a bar, for example, it would be bad PR for Disney if this employee was actually dressed in their Disneyland costume. So Disney implemented a very strict rule from the get-go that your personal life is completely separate from your Disney life, and no employee should be allowed to bring their work home. You should consider having similar rules for your business. Our technology makes it incredibly easy to integrate the two, Having two clear distinctions of when your employees can interact on social networks for your business or for their own personal use can help prevent accidental posts from showing up on the wrong account. Another recommendation is to immediately change passwords of social channels if an employee leaves the company. This should be standard practice, so make it a policy if you haven't already, because disgruntled employees, as we've learned, can create some of the biggest negative PR headaches for your business. Another problem that I see too many businesses get into is accessing their Facebook page. If you had someone create your page, you should have immediately been assigned manager of the page. If not, you're putting your business at great risk. Here's why. A manager has access to all the features of your page, whether it's to unpublish your page, add or delete admin roles, and so on, only a manager can make these changes. If you have a Facebook page for your business, you need to be a manager of it. 
you also need to know who else is managing your page. If it's someone that's no longer working for you, they need to be removed as an admin. Be proactive of monitoring and handling your Facebook page. Don't wait until there's an emergency to deal with it. Understand the admin roles of your Facebook page and make changes now if you need to. To get to your admin setting, hover over Edit Page at the top and select Manage Admin Roles. Now you will need to be a manager of the page in order to see this feature. So make sure you're a manager of your page. I can't stress this enough. Going into your admin roles, you can see every person that admins your Facebook page. Managers, content creators, and so on. Now the only difference between a manager and a content creator is that a manager can assign other admin roles as well as delete them. A content creator cannot, but has all the other benefits a Facebook manager would have. As owner of your business, you need to be manager of your Facebook page and make sure that whoever else is managing your page still works with you. If they stop working with you or suddenly disappear, their access to your page should be deleted. Many times, businesses would hire someone to make their Facebook page, never be made manager, and then that person would disappear. Without having admin access to their Facebook page, businesses were left helpless when real changes needed to be made. Don't let this happen to you. Be proactive to help make dealing with unforeseen events and challenges preventable or less of a headache to deal with when you really are dealing with a crisis. So to summarize day three, be proactive before crisis strikes by having a plan and policy in place now for how your business should handle such national tragedies or natural disasters, how to address inappropriate social media behavior by employees, whether accidental or intentional, and allowing company decision makers access to social channels such as being assigned manager of a Facebook page. Well, that concludes day three of the five-day social media fitness challenge. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day four of the five-day social media fitness challenge, where we'll be learning some valuable lessons from Apple's marketing comeback. I'm Avital Eidenbaum from the Social Media Fitness Gym. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.